Amidst all the 1990s roadster mania, you might have expected something a bit more serious from BMW. And when the Z3 was released in, what, 95? It came with four cylinder engines only. But as much as this one is a 1.9, that means 138 brake horsepower, 133 foot-pounds of torque, maybe not much for 1300 kilos. Tell you what, this is a nice bit of kit, so let's explore that. Classic BMW lines at the front, and I say classic because there's a lot of 507 in this from the 50s. Big sweeping lines, and my favorite has to be this line that carries from the grille through the bonnet all the way around to the rear of the car. And in really this bright red, it's just a slice of summer. And the design greets you on the inside too. You don't forget about the exterior details, like that bonnet bulge, and there's a good view out the rear view mirror. Despite the fact it's not the wide arch model, of course. In the interior proper, well, we've got curvature to the dashboard. Seats look good. They're a little bit firm, and the bolstering is, leaves a little bit to be desired. But, of course, as per BMW, driving position, spot on, gear levers to hand, and I suspect that on a long tour you would be rather comfortable. And the other part to that is that even on these little lanes here, the ride quality is very good. There's no, an absence of scuttle shake, and those little bumps are just soaked up. You still feel the road, but uh, generally it rides really well. Quite impressed actually. What's more, at speed it's quiet. The noisiest thing is the roof when it's up. Of course the earlier cars had that single layer roof, whereas the later ones had the three layers. Even so, at a steady 70, it's pretty quiet and not going to be too tiring. <laughs> and when you get onto a proper bit of road, <laughs> it's a proper bit of fun. Yes, it's only the four cylinder, but oh, it's got zingy character to it. And you can hear it. It's properly vocal. There's loads of intake noise at first and has a real zing to the exhaust. It's peppy. I reckon you can hear a lot more of it actually than you would in a BMW saloon of this era. Throttle response is good, sharp, suits the car well. Oh. The brakes are reasonably strong too, right, keeping up with the uh, car's performance. <laughs> oh man, not a little B road like this where the surface is bumpy, it just kind of glides over it. A little bit of uh, wandering there, but uh, deals with it well. It allows you to place the car just neatly along without having to worry about the car being thrown off course, which is, of course, not what you want with semi trailing arms. And now we're just sitting at just under 50 miles an hour, cruising along. The car feels very relaxed. Sitting at 2,000 RPM. A little bit of ruffling in the hair from the wind, but the wind guard works well. And we've got these big windows. But the thing I don't like is the quarter lights seem a little bit old fashioned on a car this age. But all in all, really nice car to just sit and consume the miles. Right, now we're on a road that we can begin to explore a little bit more of the Z3's performance. Third gear, hanging it in these S-Bends. 
There's great feel through the steering. It's really well weighted. And I'd say actually in this respect, it's got one over on the MX-5. But where it doesn't quite have the MX-5's finesse, maybe. No, that's not quite right. It's body control that this car struggles with. It rolls a little bit initially and you find out that it has quite soft springs. You go over a bump mid-corner and it does start to lose a bit of composure. And then it gets playful, <laughs> which is interesting on semi-trailing armed rear. Of course, the front suspension is from the E36. So it's a bit of a blend of modern and old there. And then you could say that playful character is something to enjoy and relish. Okay, right, slow through here, but, and out, whoa. Tell you what, the rear end generally feels quite well tied down. It's got to have something to do with the fact that it's got 205 width tyres all round. Seems a lot of tyre for this much power. And be perhaps because of that, the front end is really keen. And with that steering, it's really beautifully uh, agile to go through the corners. In fact, you can start to build up a bit of a rhythm and you get used to the soft suspension, use it to your advantage to soak up the bumps and there's a fluidity about it. That's really enjoyable. Now interestingly, the 1.9, well, with the four cylinders, they have an uneven weight distribution, 52-48. But the front end is so keen, there's not even a hint of understeer. You just pitch it in. <laughs> the engine's so lively. And then carry it out on a razor sharp throttle response, actually. And the rear digs in. Oh. Yeah, there's proper feel, there's a response to this chassis. Do not think it's not a sports car to enjoy. It's a barrel of laughs. There you go, the Z3, a bit of fun, a real bit of fun. Don't think that the four cylinder isn't fun. It's got real character to it. It's lively, it's peppy. And then you get all the traditional BMW smoothness and tactility to the controls that is missing from some of its uh, roadster rivals of the era. And then of course it's refined as well. It's refined enough for a long road trip. There are a few uh, cubbyhole deficiencies around here, but you can just about make do, and the boot is reasonably sized. It will also do loads to the gallon, I imagine, nearly 40. As an all-round package, it's pretty difficult to beat. It loses a little bit of body control on the faster stuff, the smoother roads, but on most British free roads, it's actually well set up, I'd say, at least for a six, seven tenths drive. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, well, subscribe. Make sure you like this one. And uh, well, in the meantime, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you soon.